All right, Dave, we got to get into the news here while we still have time. I want to talk about Vince McMahon, his uh, days as a TKO shareholder coming to an end. He's put his last shares on. Eight, eight, million, eight million shares for $780 million. Yeah, or in that range. I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but it's, those are close. So anyway, the big topic when it comes to Vince is and I've talked to several people and, and written to several people as well, um, key people in the in the business. You think he's going to try to come back and do something on his own? He has sold a lot of stock. Well, sold- one, $1.5 billion? He'll have $1.7 well, well, by the time all is said and no, done? No, 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 no. No, when, 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 when all is said and done, he'll have about uh, $2.1 billion, $2.2 billion Okay, he's, $2.2 uh, billion. Yeah. I am skeptical i agree with you i i, I, was I like, think it's it's possible but i mean uh, he's gonna well, he's gonna start a company with who that's exactly i mean that's I, the biggest thing i mean everybody's under contract with aw for years everybody's under contract with wwe for years i mean it's not like he had a okay, even throwing out everything involving janelle grant okay it's not like from about 2019 on that he had a stellar reputation as a genius in this business I mean, the shows were terrible. They were, they were, uh, you know, viewers dropping off in droves, year over year declines. People were miserable. They, they hated what was going on. I mean, who is going to choose a Vince McMahon? Like Vince McMahon starting a company from scratch. Who's going to choose that over over WWE, AEW? We don't know if he can get a television deal. He probably could because he's Vince McMahon, but he's seventy-eight years old. I mean, having to start everything from scratch, oh, knowing yes, there's a very good chance that you could fail, I don't oh, see him doing it. I completely agree, but I've had people who, you know, are pretty in tune who believe that his just so you know, he's got a non compete, so I think that he would not be able to start for um you know, several months. But um it was basically one person was talking to me and who who believed that, that he would. And was just saying that, like, and I was saying, like, who's he going to get? Everyone's under contract to AEW and WWE. And it's like, there's a lot of people whose contracts are up this year. And he's got $2 billion. And, um, you know, people will go um, if you want to pay, if you want to pay, you know, enough. So um, I I don't know. I, I don't see it. I don't think it's a wise move. I don't think you can start anything right now. I just think that uh, with the two companies the way they are, I mean, you could you could start a company and, and try to fight TNA, you know, or something like that on that level, you know, or whatever. But I mean, as far as something to be competitive with AEW, um, I, I, the not talent- just AEW, WWE. Well, I mean, gonna- for for the love of God, it's like the reason the AEW took off was because the WWE was as uncool as it had ever been in 2019. It was it was losing viewers, siphoning viewers. Well, it, it was it was way more uncool in the '90s, but but it was in it was a you know. Well, I'm it, talking since the Monday Night Wars. It had never been more uncool. There was no better time for an alternative to start than 2018, 2019. It yeah. was perfect timing for AEW. Well, well, you know, well, uh, well there's there was periods like what 20, 2003 ish where you know it, it was it was almost scary to the point where, you know, we were talking about like maybe the whole thing was going to have to be you know. Like uh, you know, run, you know, run out of Europe because the domestic was so was, was so low. But um, you know, obviously they turned that around. You know, when Cena came, Cena turned that around. There was like two thousand three ish. It was pretty. It was pretty weak. All right. Also, Kenny Omega. Yeah. So Kenny Omega was on his Twitch st- stream, and uh, he was uh, you know basically there's a lot of stuff that you can see it on the front page and everything on Punk, and he was very you know just trying to say hey you know like a lot of guys he just wants to move past it you know and I don't you know this week didn't move past it but I think that's what he wants to do and mentioned that uh, you know he's fine and maybe you know you know that maybe they should have whatever whatever. Um, Sometimes a fight's okay. He just basically, because of the NDA, he said he was very limited in what he could say. So he basically just said that when he went in there, the first thing he did was uh, go to the dog, which is, you know, that's the story we always heard. He, that uh, Larry the dog was barking uncontrollably as this fight's going on, and, and he tried to calm the dog down before everything else. And then didn't talk about, you know, getting bit or anything like that, um, which were not by the dog. That was by Ace Steel. But... Um, you know, so he was talking about that, and he kind of made a hint about the um, 
that he may be going to the hospital soon. And it does look like that he's going to have to have surgery. There is no date right now, but it does look like he's going to have to have that surgery, which I I know he wanted to avoid it. But, um, you know, every week it, it felt more and more likely because he was just, you know, he just was in a lot of pain and he got, you can't, you can't be living like that. So hopefully, um, you know, he gets surgery date soon and he can make a recovery. And, um, you know, he's been through, the, he's been through the ringer. He really has been through the ringer this, you know, since, you know, he got that diverticulitis. All right. You and uh, Garrett talked about the Windy City riot. So I don't want to go over the entire show again, but a couple of things to talk about there. I have not seen the last three matches, but I've seen everything else on the show. And I thought the uh, Azumi match with uh, Stephanie Bacure was, for a 10-minute match, was really I thought good. that was a damn good match. That was really good I match. thought they did a great job. Yeah. And like everything on the show that I saw was good, but that one in particular really stuck out to me. And I like the angle they did with, uh, with Team Filthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've been building up that for a long time, and... Tom Lawler ended up teaming with Fred Rosser, and Team Filthy was upset about it, and they basically told him to, you know, make his choice, whatever he was going to do. And so uh, after the match, when they did the four-way for the tag team titles, you know, they turned on Tom, and they cut his hair, and they fed his hair to Fred Rosser. So that's uh, that's two guys now they've, they've cut the hair and, off of. And um, was it um, Isaac ate his hair too? Yeah, he ate his hair. Oh, my that's God. That's disgusting. I, yeah, it's all sweaty. Don't, don't even, even human even, hair. Man, I know. I think, then, Tommy, course, I think Tommy Dreamer did that once. Do you know that? I'm sure a lot of people did a lot of crazy things. But I, I recommend against eating hair yeah. among bodily fluids and, and body parts. And then it was Shota, Muna, uh, Shota Umino and Jack Perry, which uh, I also was, thought was a uh, great match. It was a great it was a great crowd reaction, both positive and negative to Jack Perry. I mean, that was the, that was to a lot of people the story of the show. And in the feedback I got, you know, even more than Moxley winning, the like the people were just like, the just the reaction, you know, like like um, in the arena, like people just couldn't believe like he got this incredible reaction with, you know, many many people booing him and many many people cheering him. Well, it depended on what he did. I mean, there was a there was a period where he uh, at the end he hit the CM Punk running, and this was in Chicago, by the way, and he hits a CM Punk running knee in the corner, and they booed him for that one. Yeah. But then he starts going like this to do the go to sleep, and they cheered him. Yeah. So it was like you know, depending on what he did. I mean, there were chants of "You got choked out," and then the rest of the crowd was chanting "No, he didn't," and there were Luchasaurus chants and. Uh, I mean, he got a hell of a reaction. All I will say is this. I would not, if I were Tony Khan, be thrilled to have CM Punk chants all over my show. I would not be thrilled with that. If if that's what happens when Jack Perry shows up, and like for the next year, every time he's on TV, the crowd is loudly chanting for one of the stars of the other company. Yeah. I would not, I would not think that that would be ideal. But uh, but maybe yeah, but that but that may happen. Does. That yeah. may happen. But but if he continues, to, you know, if he gets giant reactions, I mean, he's never. That was the biggest reactions the guy ever got in his entire career last night. Yeah, and uh, but we really don't know what we don't know what reaction he would have got coming back if they had not aired the footage. We don't know that. We don't. I mean, know. now that we have seen the footage, it certainly did help his reactions on a U.S. show. In Chicago. In Chicago. In in Chicago. We don't know what it's going to be like in St. Louis or in another city. We don't know that yet. Yeah. No. Um, We don't know if it's got staying power. Um, There's a lot. But it is something. You know what I mean? It was definitely something. So, um, you know, test of time. Everything's a test of time right now when it comes to that. I know that Tony's very, very happy feeling that, it's vindication because he got that giant reaction and he did do this before Chicago thinking that it was going to be really big. And, uh, you know, well, again, time will, time will tell, you know, and I mean, time will tell, time will tell next week's ratings, the buy rate for the, for Sunday. And, um, is Jack Perry going to be a bigger star as a heel now than he would have been otherwise? Those are the three big questions when it comes to, 
the decisions that were made this week. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.